Dear students, once we estimate a walk, we can test the block exogenity, Granger causality, etc., using the F test procedure. Now consider three variables yt, xt, zt. Now yt is in the first equation regress down yt minus i, x t minus i, z t minus i. Then xt on y, xt on y t minus i x t minus i z t minus i z t also on y t minus i x t minus i z t minus i then consider the coefficients of this as a group as a group and uh, if uh, all these groups are significant, then we will say that the lagged values of yt, xt and zt are important for uh, determining the future values of yt. Similarly, in the second, in the third. If your uh, interest is Granger causality only, and if you want to know whether xt Granger causes yt, as I told you in the class, last class, you regress this yt on yt minus 1, zt minus 1 only, unrestricted r, then yt on all these, unrestricted r, rss, restricted and unrestricted, formulate f. In the second equation also you follow the same procedure. That will give us the significance of each block of the lagged terms on yt, xt, zt. But this F test procedure or Granger causality, the, the statistics used in the context of Granger causality is F. It will give us an idea about whether the past values of yt minus i is significant for explaining yt, xt minus i significant to determine yt like this, but it will not give us direction of causality, direction of causality. It will not give us information about what is known as the direction of causality or uh, the sign of relationship between variables. Then what the F test gives us is whether the lagged values are significant or not, but it will not give us whether the effect is positive or negative. Whether yt minus i as a group has positive effect on yt xt minus i has positive effect on yt or negative effect on yt etc etc. So F test will not reveal whether the change in the value of a given variable has positive or negative effect on other variables or it will not tell, also it will not tell us how long it will take for the effect of a cause to die down. How long it will take for the effect of a cause to, uh, to work throughout the system before it die out. So in order to see the effect, uh, in order to see the nature of the effect, that is whether it is positive or negative, and also in, also in order to see how many time periods will be required for the effect of a shock to die out in the entire system, we calculate what is known as impulse response function and variance 
decomposition. Impulse response function and variance decomposition. Now, in the form of a definition, impulse response tries out the responsiveness of dependent variables in the VAR to shocks to each of the variables. And what it says is, so in the first equation we have u1t, u2t, u3t. Suppose that a unit shock is given to u1t. A unit shock, we will say actually a standard deviation shock. The distinction will be discussed later. Suppose a unit shock is given to u1t. Then impulse response function traces out the responsiveness of the dependent variable yt in the war to a unit shock in u1t. Not only on yt but also on xt and also zt. Similarly, a unit shock to u2t, its impact on these three, u3t and its impact on all these. That is what the impulse response function work out, traces, traces out. That is, if a, a unit shock is applied to shock, applied to the error term, and uh, its effect over time will be considered. And if there are g variables, there will be g square impulse responses. If two variables, then two square, four impulse responses. If uh, x and y are the variables, first uh, x, uh, the impulse response of x uh, lagged values on x, then lagged values that is u1 on x uh, and also y, then u2 on x and y. So four lagged so four impulse responses and this impulse responses will give us idea about the nature of relationship if a unit shock is given to u1 t what is its effect on yt what is its effect on xt what is its effect on zt whether the effect is positive or negative and also how many time periods it will take for a, the impact of a unit shock to die out uh, after going through all the variables in the system. So, uh, and remember this, if the war is stable, the effect of a shock will die out over time. So, impulse response function gives us the nature of relationship positive or negative. F test or Granger causality will tell us will tell us will tell us only whether there is significant relationship. It will not tell us the nature of relationship, whether the nature of relationship is positive or negative. Now, to explain this, let us consider a simple war model. More complicated cases will be considered later. A very simple presentation is considered here. Suppose that a bivariate work in, in one lot is considered yt is equal to a1 yt minus 1 plus epsilon t and a1 is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0, 0 0.2. Actually, this model is y1t, yt, y2t, two variables is equal to a1, that is 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.0. 0 0.2 y1 t minus 1 y2 t minus 1 plus epsilon 1t. So if you expand this 
y1 t is equal to 0.5 y1 t minus 1 plus 0.3 y2 t minus 1 y2 t is equal to 0.0 y1 t minus 1 plus 0.2 y2 t minus 1 plus epsilon 1 t here epsilon 2t here. So this is a walk with the two variables y1 and y2. One log of y1, one log of y2 is taken, a simple one. So the model is written as y1t, y2t is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.0, 0 0.2, y1 t minus 1, y2 t minus 1, plus epsilon 1 t, epsilon 2 t. Now suppose that the effect at the time t is equal to 0 of a unit shock unit shock to y1 t at t is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0 then y0 is equal to epsilon 1 0 epsilon 2 0 0 is equal to 1 0 epsilon 1 t a unit to shock epsilon 2 t no shock then we can trace out uh, y1 as equal to a1 y0 is equal to 0 0.5 0 0.3 0 0.2 into y0 1 and 0 that will give us 0.5 and 0. Then y1 is, y2 is equal to a1 y1 is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 into 0 0.5 into 0 is equal to 0 0.250. Again, you substitute y3 like that. So, this is the system. A unit shock is given to given to the innovation in the first equation. So, epsilon 1 0 is 1, 2 0 is 0. Then, what is y1? What is y1? That is 0.5. y2 is 0. What is y2? It is 0.25. y1 is 0. y1 is 0 because the coefficient of y1 is 0 in the second equation. That is why it is 0. Now consider a shock to epsilon 2 0 in the first period. Then y0 is equal to epsilon 1 0, epsilon 2 0 is equal to 0 1. 0 1. Then y1 is equal to a1 y0 is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 into 0, 1 is equal to is equal to 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Then y2 again a1 y1 is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.0, 0 0.2 into 0 0.3, 0 0.2 is equal to 
point two one, point zero four. So these are the impulse responses. In the first case, y one is point five. That is, if there is a one unit shock here, y one, the value of y one in the period y one is point five. Y two is is point two five. Y three it decreases. The effect is positive. Then a unit shock to epsilon two t. Then what is y one? Impulse response for variable y one is point three. Y two is point two. Then in the second period point two one point zero four. So the effect decreases over time. And from this, you can say what will be the impulse response. That is whether the effect increases or decreases. Here it decreases, 0.5, then 0.25. Here also 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.21, 0.04 like this. So the advantage of impulse response is that it gives us the effect of a shock on that variable and also the other variable. That is the direction of causality is given from impulse response function. But in the Granger causality, you will not get the direction of causality. And variance decomposition is a slightly different method for analyzing the dynamics of war. And the variance decomposition gives us the proportion of movements in dependent variables that are due to their own shocks versus shocks to other variables. That is the proportion of movements in dependent variables that are due to its own shock and shocks to other variables. That is we consider that the proportion of that is the total uh, movement due to shocks to uh, that variable and also that is shocks to that innovation in that and also all the other innovations and we consider the proportion of this total resulting from shocks to its own innovation and uh, shocks to innovation to all. That is a point which we will see discuss in detail later. And remember this, this calculation of impulse response function is highly complicated. This is a simple representation of calculating impulse response function. But fortunately, all the softwares will give you uh, impulse response function. And by examining the pattern of this impulse response function, you can say, whether the effect of a shock has positive effect on that variable, negative effect on that variable, and also positive or negative effect on all the other variables in the system. We will discuss and the derivation of the impulse responses in more complicated cases is highly mathematical. And a very simple presentation is given in principles of econometrics by uh, Carter Hill et al. Carter Hill et al. It's a very simple presentation given Carter Hill and others. The name of the book is Principles of Economics.